Um, it's an intro here. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about settings and a couple of the tools that we have available from within uh, vehicle tracking. Uh, my name is Leo Levi, and I work with uh, Imagine It. I typically have a slide about me, but I just want to get right into the software. We're really going to be looking at vehicle tracking, and it's an add-on to pretty much any AutoCAD uh, platform. In our case, we're going to be looking at uh, vehicle tracking as it's added onto Civil 3D. Uh, we're going to navigate the interface, a couple of settings and libraries inside of here, and uh, we're then going to look at uh, our options for navigating the vehicle movements. Um, uh, we're going to be then looking at vertical clearances and parking lot layouts. So just a really quick demo on what we're able to do with the software. It's so easy to use and so fun to use, and I'll tell you what I like about it, and uh, in some cases I'll tell you what I don't love too much about it. Um, so as we go on forward here, the first thing I want to talk about is how to get it. Um, if you have the Autodesk desktop app installed and have access to it, you should be able to see it right on there. And it should pull whatever years of release since you're licensed to use. It'll pop it on there. You have to install it. Now, you have to install it. Even though you may have access to the entire collection or suite of products, um, it's not something that installs by default. And it can install into the basic AutoCAD or any of the AutoCAD-based platforms, but you have to go out there and get it. And once it's installed, you can see here at the bottom of the ribbon, you'll, you'll have a whole vehicle tracking tab, and all the tools are going to be loaded onto it. And that's what the tools we're going to be looking at today. Well, not all of them, but some of them. So let's take a look at uh, what we're able to do inside of uh, vehicle tracking. Uh, we are going to be looking at it as it is added in 2020, but these tool sets uh, are still available for earlier releases as well. You just have to go out there and find the appropriate year for you to add on to your particular version of AutoCAD or Civil 3D. All right, so let's get started here. And I will kick this one out. And I'm gonna go directly into my, um, which is one of my drawings here. It's my first drawing that I wanna talk about. And the first thing I wanna talk about here is how to get this. And again, that was just off of the app, the Autodesk desktop app. If you happen to have it, you can go out here and download it and see what you have readily available. Now, whatever you have available, for example, for Civil 3D, I know for my Civil 3D, I had a bit of problem finding in my list, so I just went up here for the V for vehicle tracking, and it gave me what I had. You can see here I have it now installed. There will be not only the point products themselves, but I want to tell you that sometimes there's updates or patches for the product that you want to go ahead and get. Notice I have mine installed for 2018, and there's an update for it. There's a 2018.3. And sometimes that is enough of a difference, guys. You may be running a, a year release of your product, and someone may have vehicle tracking, and you're running on an older, and they were running on an earlier release. And if you install that update, um, it's going to give you a, a little pop-up saying there is a newer version of vehicle tracking installed or readily available. There's an object that's, uh, from a newer version of it. So be aware that, yes, you can install the, the product itself, but there's updates that you may have to go out there and get just so it runs smoother and better, and sometimes the object themselves change, causing a pop-up. Now, once you have it installed, it'll appear as a tab up here. There's my tab, Express Tools, Vehicle Tracking. There it is. And, of course, using the ribbon, I can drag and drop the ribbon for the location so I can put it uh, closer to where I'll be liking where I would see it. There is the option, of course, of taking these uh, tabs across the top and turning them on and off. And every once in a while, I um, turn it off just to get a much more narrow view of tabs across the top, and I forget that I turned it off. It's like, oh, where's my vehicle tracking? It's right there. All right. So as far as working with vehicle tracking, as, as long as it's licensed and available to you, you're going to be able to use the tools across the top here. We're going to talk about a couple of these tools here. We're going to get into settings. We're going to do a little bit of a sweat path analysis and some of the options there. And we're going to be looking at some of the parking lot tools. Now, inside of here, I want to talk about settings because this is one of the first questions, typical questions that comes up in, in class. And looking at settings, it actually steps through this wizard here. And as I go through the next tab and the next tab and the next tab, it gives me options to look at making changes uh, all the way as I go through here. The advanced tab is just the, ran, the, the, the generic box of all my pieces, so it really depends on what part of the wizard I am. It will open the appropriate matching location on the settings tab here, and as I cancel out the tab that I want to talk about you, the secret here, the reason why you're in this particular session is this button right here, guys, the design speed, and I can change that, of course, in my design and my little advanced button. It's down here under speed. 
And the reason I want to talk about this is because sometimes I've been looking at trying to make a particular path or a predictive movement of a steered vehicle and isn't quite working. But if you tinker with your speed over here, you might make it uh, be able to work. So getting that truck into your sight uh, at five miles per hour may not be good, but if you bump that down to maybe, I don't know, two miles per hour, it's going to work out neatly. So that's uh, the first setting that I want to talk about inside of here. And there's several other settings inside of here, uh, messing with your steering limits, letting it go to 100% of the steering limit, or backing it down so you can have a conservative run through a particular site, so you can have it go fast through a site when you know that they can go slower, so you can be conservative in your uh, analysis inside of here. So a couple settings inside of here that may limit yourself even more so than the specs for a particular vehicle, and then allowing you a little bit of wiggle room at the end there. So just wanted to show a couple of these uh, options inside of here for us to be able to design. The settings tab does have many, many settings. I don't want to spend too much time on them. And going to the settings over here, the, there is the option to go into system settings, which is the advanced tab that I just showed you a minute ago. That's one of the settings I want to talk about. There's a second place that's kind of hidden. There's a button over here called reports. And reports, although yes, it can help you talk about running reports and where these are going to go, what I would like to talk about here is unlike over here the settings tab, I want to draw your attention to the report. It's a little, what well, looks like a little paper with a wrench on it. It opens this button over here. Now what it has inside of here is what we're going to see on the screen. More specifically, the body outline that we will see here in green, and we have the option of changing those uh, as I go forward as a, as a light green, and as I back it up in reverse, it's going to be a darker shade of green. And as I move on forward, um, when I start looking at the chassis of the vehicle, it's going to be a, uh, this light red, and as I back up in reverse, it's going to be a darker shade of red. And I can change all of this, because as far as uh, running with uh, vehicle tracking, we're going to be predicting the movement of steered vehicles. That not only includes cars or trucks, but trains and planes, anything with wheels. So as you start looking at other settings inside of here, there's load outlines, there's a panograph report here, jet exhaust temperature contours, exhaust velocity from jets. There's all kinds of things that we have inside of here because we're able to analyze anything with wheels. It could be a plane, it could be a gurney, it could be a forklift. So there are two places that I look at settings. That is, of course, the settings button over here with the wrench, but there's a much smaller one over here under reports. All right, so let's talk about actually using some of these tools. And as I start using this, I can start working with the vehicle library, and I have a ton of vehicles inside of here, a thousand number uh, of vehicles, and you can see how they start working with all over the world vehicles. Um, you could actually run through and uh, figure where this is actually being saved at and start chopping down these libraries and start removing them from your um, uh, repository, uh, which is locally installed in your C drive. But what we could do inside of here is just chop everything down and just be specifically set to the US and start looking at vehicles here. Now, we can run and, and uh, sort things by group, by category, by class, or by type. Or you can do a, a search here. I want to start looking at my site here, and I want to run with a school bus. So I'm just going to say here, school bus, and run a search for it. Now, it gives me all the school buses it finds in this list. I'm just happy to be digging into the U.S., into an Asheville school bus. And inside of here, there's different uh, categories that I can start looking at what we have readily available. And I'm going to look at specifically this 36-foot uh, uh, school bus here. And you can see I have a little panel over here where I can see the, the diagram for it. If I turn on and off that diagram, I'm able to see it, a diagram that I'm also able to bring into um, my model space. So I can start looking at what this looks like and all the dimensions on it. Uh, start looking at the information behind this. And all images or items that I'm able to bring into model space. So I'm going to just work with a school bus here. I'm going to work with a school bus, and what I would like to do is uh, just navigate my site. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. A big library of parts here, and this is the, the first button here, my vehicle library explorer. And what I want to see is just move around the site to see how the school bus comes in through this particular um, subdivision that uh, that is existing that I'm proposing. So as I go through here, what I'm going to do is there are many methods of running through analysis here with specific angles for my turns. I'm just going to pick and click on the screen and go. 
I'm going to select my school bus, and I'm not going to set it as the default. I'm just going to use the defaults inside of the software for my settings and scale, and I start by giving the first location and then the second point for direction. I do have other options to adjust the, the analysis and what I'm going to be seeing here on the screen. I will accept those defaults and just start popping points here for my school bus as it's going to be coming into this turn. All I'm doing here is picking and clicking on the screen. You can see how it's uh, placing the outline of my school bus through, throughout the site. And if I want to have greater control of what's going on, instead of being so wide for my picks and my clicks, maybe negotiating this turn inside of here may require a couple more picks and clicks, so it makes this turn in the way that I want it to. And there I go here. I call it all the way to the end. Once I reach the end, I can go ahead and hit Enter, and I see what uh, I get on the screen. Now, the thing I love or enjoy about using this, if you uh, exit it prematurely, when you go here to the end, you're able to continue your path if you wanted to. There's a little plus sign at the button there. In the middle, if you ended up uh, mispicking and clicking, you want to add an, an extra point here. You can use a little plus sign and add an extra pl uh, location for your vehicle to go to. Now, if you get a little bit too aggressive and uh, what you end up plotting on your screen isn't good enough, you can see how the envelope of the vehicle, which happens to be the body and the chassis there, highlighted in red and green, disappear. I can hit undo. The thing that uh, I like is how easily you're able to run with this. However, if you were too aggressive and you're picking and clicking, you know, you have an itchy uh, trigger finger, and you ended up flooding your screen with too many vertices there, you can't do anything about it. You can't dynamically remove. You can only add, 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 but you can't take away. So that's one of those things that I find uh, kind of odd. Now, I can adjust my path here, and I can see how my vehicle is able to come through. And it's able to make this turn through this cul-de-sac, uh, excuse me, through this roundabout, as long as it, uh, I'm able to drive over this bricked area here. And you can see maybe it's encroaching onto the other um, uh, lane of traffic. I have other tools to be able to see what I have going on inside of here to analyze this uh, horizontally is uh, to be able to check my design. In this particular case, the school bus is able to come through here with no issues as far as uh, the, the turning angles and being able to negotiate the site. Uh, what I'm able to look at is, well, how, how much am I steering with this particular vehicle coming through this site? I do have the ability of going in here and inserting what's called a, a graph, the graph of my steering. So you can see here as I'm running down my site, the graph is uh, tied to it. So wherever I end up putting it, I'm going to get a little line pointing to who it belongs to. Uh, maybe I have some alternates or some other options. So I have that object being shown here on the screen. And it gives me the percentage of my steering as I'm coming through out. So I'm able to see where I'm at uh, within my design. I like this tool set and what I'm able to see here. Um, what I also am able to do is plot on screen um, the profile for this particular design or the uh, template for my particular bus over here. I'm just going to uh, pop on this template here, and I'm going to insert to the current block. Be careful. You can print it out to a printer or send it out to a DXF. You want to bring it into the screen. And as I go inside of here, I'll accept the bus that I was using. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring it into the screen, give it the five mile per hour. And I do have a couple other settings inside of here. But I'm able to bring this template on my screen here, accepting all the defaults. And it's generating that template. It gives me a point on the screen of where I want to bring this in. I can insert it. And there is my vehicle template. So if you want to take this printed out and maybe figure out the turns yourself, there is uh, that option. But I can plot my template from the vehicle that I'm using. I think it's neat. I like it. Let's keep on talking about negotiating uh, uh, my vehicle movement through a site. Let's, ta let's talk about my next uh, drawing over here. Very similar to before, I'm going to use a slightly different set of tools to get what I want to here. Uh, I want to bring in a commercial truck, a rigid delivery truck into my site. And what I do is, what I want to do is have it come in from the street and uh, back on up into the Bay Area over here. Um, so once again, I'm going to go back here and start looking at the vehicles. If I want to run my, uh, excuse me, if I want to run my design, it's going to be an auto drive here, and I will look for the particular uh, truck that I want to. If you happen to know uh, where it's at, you can look for it here. It's, I happen to know it's uh, cancel. I don't want to use the same one. I'm going to use is it backspace on that SU30, and there is my single unit truck. 30 feet. I can go ahead and pick on it, and I can start placing locations on the screen here, direction that I'm coming into, 
my site. And this is pretty straightforward as I'm picking and clicking. But as I'm making the turn, unlike where before, where you saw me come in through that uh, roundabout, I, I gave myself several picks and clicks to turn in. What I'm going to do is align myself with geometry, like this uh, pavement marking inside of here. And I can come in and bring the bus into my site. As I'm coming in, I want to uh, come into my uh, parking lot and then back on up into this bay. So I'm going to align myself again with the other geometry. This is just AutoCAD geometry in here on the screen here. This is just a standard AutoCAD polyline. And I'm coming into my site. And this is the awesome part. I can choose to back up. And all I'm doing is dragging my mouse to the back here. I'm not sure how it comes to the screen over to the web, but you should see that there's a, a slightly darker shade of green here because I am backing up. And as I'm backing up here, how about I align myself with the bay itself so I can come into and pop that truck right there. Once you're done, you can hit enter, and there's the path for your particular truck. I use on-site geometry to be able to uh, line myself up, and I can see here that although I'm coming into the site and I'm able to back up into that location, at the entrance there, I'm clipping the curb. So I'm able to go here and uh, add more vertices to change what I'm doing. Or there is a little arrowhead that I'll, would allow me to adjust the overturn or the oversteer of the vehicle. So I can come in and not clip that turn. An experienced driver would be able to do that. And I can see that this 30-foot uh, vehicle would be able to come through here. And well, the, the vehicle that I'm bringing in here, just so you see what I'm working with, is this little truck right here. It's an SU-30, a single unit truck. Little rigid delivery truck coming into, bringing in supplies to my store. So I can see that this vehicle is able to make the turn. I'm encroaching into the other lane, so just need to make sure the driver uh, realizes that there is no uh, oncoming traffic. Now, as far as analysis go, this is neat, but if I want to add a little flavor here, I can animate this and see how uh, what I'm able to do. Now, I can animate this and just have the truck uh, show me the path as it's going through here, and it's just going to run through, and yeah, that's the turn it's going to make coming into my site. But what I can also do, depending on what my 3D might be available, if I switch this on over to 3D, I can see how this truck is coming into my site. And uh, using these little play forward and move back buttons inside of here, I can, I can see how the truck is coming into my site. See that oversteer coming in. Now you can see on, on this particular site there is uh, buildings and there's trees inside of here, and that has to do with uh, making sure that the geometry you have is going to show this. Uh, pretty much over here I have blocks that represent trees that are just flat in 2D. Most of the other geometry is 2D in nature, but you can see how some of those buildings were extruded and um, how some of the trees oh, um, show me uh, the, the 3D trees on screen. Now I can choose my camera angle just so I see the truck a little bit better. Or I can choose my point of view, uh, in this case from the driver's eye, as it's going through, and I can use the mirrors as, as it's reversing as it's coming into the site. Although you can see the geometry around here in 3D, uh, someone took the time to extrude the buildings or put the buildings in place, or perhaps use multi-view blocks that allow me to see 2D trees in 2D and 3D trees in 3D. This, of course, can be saved out and um, uh, into a recording, into a file, and into an AVI that I can embed in a presentation save and uh, send out. Go ahead and close that out. Say the viewpoint no. So you see what I have here are a series of 2D and 3D objects and it really depends on what do you have in the software in 2D or 3D. So it's not that vehicle tracking is creating 3D geometry for you. It's that this particular drawing, let's set this over here to conceptual, you'll see that there is 3D geometry here. So when the, the car went through in that view, it showed those objects. And you'll notice how those trees are very specifically 3D in view. But when I go to plan, they are more plan view related. And it just depends on your view and your and your setup inside of here. Not really focusing on the AutoCAD function of the software, more of the uh, vehicle tracking function of the software. But there was supplementing uh, elements around here. Those are a couple options that we have for uh, the software. I like them. I like them all. Continue to work with uh, vehicle tracking, I have options for looking at clearances. This is all great and horizontal, but how about if I want to start looking at the vertical piece inside of this? And what I have here is working with the civil software, I do have a quarter that's brought in here. I have a vehicle tracking um, uh, object that was coming in here, 
and I can see that that analysis has been done. It stays on the road, and um, it's uh, actually overtaking uh, part of my lane here. Now, what I want to show off here is, I'm, as I'm working with this, there is a system setting for civil. Uh, looking at this inside of here, there are, are settings where I'm able to pull a surface, and it just depends on um, uh, my settings for my drawing here, where I'm able to look at the fact that I am pulling surfaces. I have an existing surface and I have a proposed surface, and that's how it's able to maintain uh, the vertical terrain on there and do the next analysis to see what's going to happen here next. I want to see what's happening through this truck through here. So this uh, clearance that I'm going to talk about here is, um, well, first of, all, first of all, let's take a look at the, the truck that we're putting through here. It's a low boy. Not only is it a low boy over here, it is a double articulated low boy. So if I take a look at this design, let's see how what happens as I'm negotiating this turn, which I only have the first picks and clicks. I gave it those first original vertices. I give it here the vertices at the beginning. I'm turning here and giving some vertices as I went through and added that path. But what I would like to see is a little bit more and add a couple more locations where this outline would be at. Not necessarily more vertices, just where does this truck go to as I'm making this turn through here, as I'm making this turn through here. So I can see how this outline looks of my truck. And you can see how much of this turn I'm taking in where this guy is going to have to really use uh, pretty much all the space he has as he's making this turn. And as you're making this turn, you'll notice that um, the tires are going to be at the lower portion of what would be a normal crown. So I, I'm going to have a crowned roadway here. My low boy may look like it's going to scrape off a little bit of pavement here off of the top of my crown and readjust, uh, give my, my pavement a little bit of a facelift here. So what I can do inside of here, based upon the terrain that I set as targets, um, I have the ability of running clearances. And as I go through here, I can start looking at my options for uh, that particular uh, clearance inside of here. And I can start looking at where am I at here it is ground conflicts. So I can select my path. It already knows the terrain that I'm looking against because that's in the settings. I use the default values. And I can see how close I'm coming to this crown as this vehicle's coming through here. So as this vehicle's coming through here, I am, and this drawing happens to be in meters, so 0 0.6 of a meter and 0 0.3 of a meter. It's giving me those little zones as it's highlighting them, but there is no red. And I can adjust the, the the colors inside of here, but there is no red as in there was no actual uh, uh, scraping of the vehicle onto my uh, asphalt here, but I'm coming really darn close. I'm coming up to uh, 0 0.03 of a meter here where you can see that yellow area being hatched on screen there. So there's part of my analysis for vertical clearance that I have. And this is based upon the vehicle tracking working with the civil 3D terrain, the terrain that was created from this corridor that you see here on the screen. So it works really neatly with Civil 3D. On top of that, I have other clearance options where I could have profiles to see how my design is going to work off of a profile. If it happens just to be standard AutoCAD line work, I could run it on that. So if you happen to have the vertical profile of your object there, you could run it off of what this is, just a regular standard AutoCAD polyline. So what you could do inside of here is start looking at um, running that uh, clearance through here. And let's see here, we have the ability of running a at clearance of my single unit truck. The default value. And I can see that my truck was had no problems coming through here. And let's see if I add in my uh, outline so I can see the truck coming through here. And it's just coming through. It has no problem making it through this profile. However, let's take a look at what might be a problem. And again, I'm just looking at my vertical clearance as an option here. Let's use something else. Let's use uh, something with a car on it. I have something with a car, boat, and a trailer. How about this guy right here? What is this guy going to look like for me? And let's take a look at the picture for him. So I have car and um, I have a, tr uh, a boat that I'm hauling. 
So as I run through this guy here, run with the defaults, it finds a conflict. Uh, yeah, this car can't make this, uh, can't clear this vertical right here. And that's just based upon AutoCAD line work. Now, what I can also do for, for those who are using Civil 3D, if you happen to have a Civil 3D profile, you can run this analysis off of a Civil 3D profile. That is that vertical clearance, pick the vehicle that you want, I can go through here and select Come on, proceed my profile, the default values, yes, and there's the, the car going through. If there are particular high points or lo low points that you would like to go ahead and add on, you can add more of those outlines here. This is pretty darn flat, but you can see that this particular vehicle has no problem making it from the beginning all the way to the end. Unlike before, my trailer had a problem and um, I have the car going one way and maybe potentially the boat going another way after it, it um, hits the ground there and um, creates a little bit of a problem for us. So there are horizontal and vertical options for analysis on your site to be able to predict the movements and clearances of steered vehicles. There is an incredible library for us to work with um, that comes out of the box here, guys. and. Pretty much if it has wheels on it, uh, we can analyze it. There's a lot that comes out of the box, whether it's a gurney, whether it's a forklift, whether it's a plane or a vehicle. Uh, there's just so much available inside of here. Whether it's articulated, whether it's rigid, there's a lot that comes out of the box. And if it's not out of the box, if you have the appropriate details that go along with it, you should be able to go in here and create it and create the pretty picture that goes along with it and add it to the software so you're able to move on forward. Now, one of the biggest questions that I'm going to go ahead and address right now is, can I bring in all of my other templates that I have created in other, in other programs? This is vehicle tracking. The other one that's out there is very popular is AutoTurn. Not that I know of. Not that I know of. I haven't been able to just use all that I've created in custom and AutoTurn to bring it inside of here. That may have changed, but the last time I checked, I was not able to do it uh, automatically. I had to do all that work all over again. All right. So that was... Um, analysis here for my um, vehicles, uh, horizontally and uh, clearances, vertical clearances inside of here. And what I would like to talk about next is parking. And I have over here what looks like, I don't know, a Walgreens, a CVS, uh, and I need to put a little bit of parking on it. And what I'm going to do here is I do have standards for parking. So I'm going to use a U.S. parking standards inside of here. Um, and most of my standards have it be for, uh, in this case, uh, parking or for my vehicles. Uh, the standards come out of the box. I can go ahead and modify them. I typically modify a copy of them. I wouldn't recommend modifying the out-of-the-box options because these are national standards. So I pretty much use these guys here to be able to uh, run with what I want to. Um, so as I create a parking lot through here, I'm just going to go here and start looking at creating a new parking lot. I will use my uh, default tool set here and I just go ahead and hit OK and I'm going to pop some points on the screen here. How about I use my O snaps and pop some points through here. Pop, pop, pop. And here I get all the way to the end. Now I have to uh, tell it whether I want rows to the left and to the right of my layout. I only want rows towards the inside. Now, the good is adding. I miss pick a couple places inside here, guys. I'm able to go back and add another vertice and add a turn right here. And as I add that turn, please note how more spaces were added, how this uh, clearance area where um, there is no parking available or the math doesn't work out for us gets all uh, sketched in and labeled out. If I missed an extra vertice point over here, there are actually two curves in the middle. And I can go back and add my next point to make sure that I get that vertice there. Now, if I had curves, notice my original layout was just a PI um, uh, endpoint to endpoint to endpoint. You know, there, there was no option for curves. Curves I typically go back and add later. So looking at I have the option over here to add a curve, I can easily go back and go in and add a curve or vertice. I can go over here and add a curve or vertice. And I love, I very much enjoy the method of adding. I can always use any one of those little plus signs that you see there to add, and I can, it's very dynamic. However, once I add, I can't remove. So that's one of those things that I don't love about this is that adding is so easy, but I can't remove at all. So what I typically do is just 
so easy to add into it, and I just delete it and do it all over again. It is an AutoCAD object um, that I'm able to, well, it's, it's an object, not an AutoCAD object. It is an object I'm able to touch. If I look at the properties of it, it is a vehicle tracking parking row. I'm able to take it. If I don't like it, delete it. Shoot, if you want to, you can explode and start tinkering with it, but I'm not going to do that. Now, inside of here, I have the ability of uh, running through my layout here, and I can start adding more. Uh, there's the option to continue to add um, parallel rows inside of here, and it can analyze what you have on the screen and uh, add a little bit more to it. I'm going to use the same standards as before. And uh, what I have inside of here, if I choose to uh, continue to add a parallel row, come on, and I go here towards the inside. Um, it tries to analyze it, and uh, based upon the standards, please note how it's already figuring out how much space there needs to be from one to the other here, and add in, create the, the rest. Notice the, the inside, it gets placed as well. Not a really good outcome here, guys, but just wanted to show that I am able to do something crazy like this. What I'm going to do is really create rows, not these loop-de-loops uh, -loop inside of here. And what I'm going to do is just go back up here and create a new row. Again, use my standards. And I really haven't talked about uh, the options that I have here, but I do have the option of choosing the type of cars that I'm bringing in here. Uh, not only the type of cars, large cars or compact cars, um, both vehicles, but then I have the actual bay style. And I have a standard and then I have a, a handicap accessible. And all these have standards inside of here on um, which will control what uh, these elements looks like how it gets paved, uh, how a uh, handicapped spot, whether it gets a, um, a a stop bar, a signage, uh, does it get space on the left or on the right for the handicapped uh, uh, safety zone itself. There's so much that I'm able to do inside of here. Um, whether you don't have it inside of here, but I also have the option of doing motorcycles as well. But there isn't a motorcycle option. It's a base style. I have users also work with this, trying to work out that every eighth or ninth or tenth stall, they want uh, just a, a landscaped area. There is no option for for that, but I have people try to try to fake it by creating a base style that that just kind of uh, blanks out a location. And it's a little bit bigger and wider for you to give yourself that that um, location. Please note that the software itself is giving some areas where no design is happening because a parking stall doesn't fit. I'm just going to use these uh, options here as default. And I'm just going to go ahead and add my own. Let me turn my oh, snaps off here. And I'm just going to eyeball this. It's hard to see on screen, but on screen, I'm getting this little bar on top of my crosshair that gives me the buffer for how this is going to actually look like and be placed on the screen. Oh, Lordy, I actually did do accessible. Jeez. Let me do that again. I had to use handicap stalls all the way around. Uh, how about I try this one more time? I want to use large cars, large cars, standard, standard. All right, cool. So as I add this inside of here once again, I can see that the parking row that it creates for me, and it gives me those little buffer areas, whether it wants to do to the left or to the right, I would like to do it to both sides, and it creates that line for me there. Please note, I, I'm doing this really raw, but if I start moving and grip editing this, there is a buffer that exists, and that's the buffer that was kind of highlighting on me on my crosshair a minute ago. So um, I can see that I do meet the clearances here for uh, minimum width. Now I can start messing with my vertices here to start uh, or, uh, grip editing and changing uh, how my parking stalls are being laid out. And I say that I have these buffers. Now when I have these buffers inside of here, they're going to help me to create more parking lots. Now or stalls, or bays, or rows, because yes, I can eyeball this from one to the other, but I can, I'm going to go ahead and create a parallel row using the same standard set here, proceed. And as I work through this, notice how I'm able to go out and be really, really wide from my original line, but there's only so much I can come close into each other. That is because it identifies that uh, on screen here, based upon my standards, there's a minimum width that I need to be meeting on here. So there are rules-based constraints to do this. Laying out parking lot for me used to be a, an array option. I used to draw a whole bunch of circles, and it just was a lot of hand drafting. This right here to uh, try to pop an idea, even if I don't uh, use the end result and may end up exploding this, it is so quick to get an idea of what's happening on screen. There's my first row, my second row. I want to continue creating parallel rows. I'm good to go. I can continue inside of here and hit OK. 
proceed inside of here and create my next row on out. And I'm just dragging and dropping inside of here. If the vertices are being a little too aggressive and I'm coming encroaching into a, to the road there, I can see all the little 2D layout of the lines where it's showing me those little buffers in blue. And I can make sure that I stay within those little buffered areas from my original parking lot that I sketched around my site. And I have many little vertices here that allow me to adjust how my parking stalls look like. Getting this and moving on forward is, well, doing a little bit more with this is uh, trying to just get a, wh wh where am I at? What's my counter look like? And uh, how many stalls am I coming in with for this site? How, how many can I squeeze with this particular setup? Just standard cars, non-compact, no, no handicap stalls, no uh, uh, motorcycle stalls inside of here. I can just get a quick counter inside of here and say, hey, give me a report of what I'm looking at here. I've ran several areas. I didn't do one from beginning to end. So I'm getting a total count of 161 uh, stalls. So I can start messing with this now. Well, what if I start changing my design? How about I start changing my design and adjusting and controlling the flow of traffic inside of here? Looking at my uh, rows here, I can change. How about I start popping some 45s inside of here? And that way, I can control my flow of traffic. It just depends on which side I'm, I'm adjusting. Uh, I can uh, perhaps save a little bit more room in places that are tight by uh, angling my parking stalls. And notice this is uh, does come with a price where I started at 161 stalls. Now I'm down to 151. I lost 10 stalls uh, just to sacrifice a little bit of space there and uh, control the flow of traffic. So I get that idea and that ability uh, from within the software easily presenting alternatives inside of here. I could run a save as and do all parallel, run a save as and run it at 45 degrees and see what we get there and uh, create a little table for myself that I can even export and eventually end up uh, with something on my screen here. I like this. I like this. I'm able to do a little bit more and uh, not only adjust my rows here, but the parking stalls themselves. And it just depends, on, again, on my settings and how much setup I've done here, where I'm able to go back and alter the parking stall itself. Notice they all get highlighted now, and I can start picking on them. And the bay type here is standard, where I can make it be accessible. And now I have one handicap parking stall. Notice how it does give me a buffer on the left and the right-hand side. It just depends on where you put that parking uh, handicap parking stall. You may only need it to the left or maybe only need it to the right. So you're going to have to really create bay types that give you uh, handicap accessible left and right uh, buffers, maybe only to the left and maybe only to the right, or maybe no buffer at all. You just make it wide enough uh, for it to take on uh, the vehicle. I like this inside of here because what I'm also able to do is start messing with the rest of these guys. And I can start choosing to go through and say, hey, what I would like to do is have it be accessible and copy it out to the next one and the next one and the next one over here. And I can give uh, most of this front row to make it be handicap accessible. And you can see how they adjust. Uh, if it fits, it fits. And it starts messing with the little hatch pattern over there for that corner. And when you're done, there are the handicap stalls. And I can start also looking at, well, what does this number mean for me? As, as I start looking at this, now I'm down to 145. Uh, stalls for here, uh, representing here that I have 10 stalls that are uh, handicap accessible, representing a certain percentage of uh, the overall site. I like it. I like what I'm able to do with this, being able to call out my lots, being able to call out my locations. Um, it's a, an incredibly powerful tool set for me to work with. And other than just being uh, this uh, simple 2D layout, um, although I can't remove vertices from my layouts here, I can look at perhaps what if I wanted to add in uh, an access here, I wanted to go back and add in a driveway entrance to my site. I do like some of the options that I have inside of here to create, you can see up here, the option to create an access road and uh, create an access road from a line. So I can say, hey, how about we create an access road from this line right here? Come on. Well, how about we just create an access road, road base point from here to here? Give it some options, whether it's going to be a two-way, what's going to be that center line, my overall width. Go ahead and hit OK. And now I have an entrance to my site. So I kind of ran a trim here for me. So I now have an entrance at another part of the site, even though I can't 
remove vertices, I can create splits, basically a trim or a break there. And once again, I can go back into my overall counter as I now am coming in and out at this particular location on my site. I can go inside of here and say, hey, what is, oh, wrong button. I can go out here and take a look at that report. And I'm down from 161 stalls that I had before. I'm down to uh, 134. Oh, and it looks like it messed with a couple of my um, handicap stalls and moved them over here. So um, I'm able to do quite a bit with uh, parking lot layout. It's a really simple 2D drafting tool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and answer a couple of questions that I typically get on this one is, hey, how about curb and gutter and curb returns and islands? I don't have all those options quite yet from within uh, vehicle tracking. I've had vehicle tracking available for a while, and those are a couple of the key questions that I typically get. I'm not sure if I'm getting those questions through the um, chat box there, but they're typically one of those hot items that I get um, when I start showing up this parking lot layout. I do have the ability of taking a look at um, creating my own standards for myself. Maybe there's a particular city and municipality that you're working with, or maybe when you're working with McDonald's or, or Burger King or a particular um, client, that you have a couple of standards that you want to follow up with them. You can copy these standards and make them be your own. And even as you have those standards here, when you start creating uh, designs, you may need to take it one step further and start messing with um, the type of uh, vehicles that you have here. Notice this particular example has two cars, large and small, uh, the standard and compact for the uh, default base size. But I also have uh, the, the type of base style inside of here that will allow me to give me that standard and or accessible, which gives me a couple of other little pieces that uh, allow me to add a little bit more to it. Uh, a safety post, a wheel stop, uh, being able to get a, a number on it, a parking meter. So there are a couple other flavors and items that I can add to my parking bays themselves. So um, that was it, guys. Just wanted to, to talk about whatever I have here, uh, some, of, some of the options. There's so many tools across the top. I didn't even talk about uh, running roundabouts, as Civil 3D does now have a roundabout option. I didn't even uh, get a chance to talk about. There are other swept path tools that are available here. There's um, uh, other uh, interesting things that I can work with, uh, parking lot layout as well, and uh, other options I didn't get a chance to pick up all the buttons. This was really the essentials or intro to vehicle tracking, being able to look at um, site components, being able to predict uh, vehicle movements uh, throughout my sites, and work with parking lots as well. So um, from here, uh, really that's uh, what I wanted to show off for us today, and wanted to see if you guys had uh, any any questions on what we uh, looked at today as it's it's a great little add-on tool. It does take uh, your effort to go ahead and add it onto the software, but I think it's really easy to use. And um, turning around to the team here, I'm not sure, Ms. Katana, if you've been um, taking a look at the, the questions, if we have anything that we need to address. Yeah, one of the biggest questions so far is will this be recorded? Um, yes, it is being recorded. A copy of the recording will be sent out to all attendees next week, so you'll get that. It'll also be posted to our resource center. Um, some other questions that came in. The civil 3D profile has to be a one-to-one -one vertical distortion. It will run on any, on any profile, but I do not think that um, vehicle tracking taking consideration that, vert, that distortion. So I would bring it down one-to-one -one for analysis purposes. It will analyze whatever you throw in front of it. So I would make it be a one-to-one -to, -one to be able to run the analysis uh, effectively. Um, let's see what else we have. Some of the questions here are a little bit more lengthy. We'll be able to take those offline and answer those direct. Um, here's one, can you extract extract poly lines to use as a straight point for design line work? Uh, that one would need clarification. I don't, I don't understand the, the questions being asked. Okay. Um, it, it would just need to be clarified on onto that question. Uh, Okay. Um, is there a minimum max limit to turning speed? 
I don't think there's a minimum max limit to turning speeds. Let me see over here under settings, advanced. I think I can uh, do whatever I want on it. However, where are you? Styles, speed, speed. I think I can do pretty much, I don't know, 500 miles an hour. Um, but if you are matching up against uh, standards, there is a page that allows me to to use astro standards. That number's in conflict with your astro standard. Can you group uh, by vehicle types? Uh, yes, there, there is an option up here. When I started uh, sorting through them, there is uh, the option to, where are you here? Uh, there is group, category, class, and type. It also depends on how, I do like how I'm able to sort by type, but it's also going to take in consideration whatever I may have put in the field here. So notice I did an SU30, and I can go here and say um, type, and I can just say truck and run a search on that, and it gives me all the trucks that might be available uh, on that uh, particular type. So it does matter what you have up here selected as you run that search. Okay, we'll take a couple more. Uh, can you jackknife the semi-truck? I feel like trucks can turn on tighter radius in real life settings. Can I jackknife the, the truck? Um, no, I saw that question. I can't necessarily jackknife the truck. What's gonna happen here, if it's not possible to make a turn, it will stop the enveloping. So if, if, if it uh, hits those limitations, all it's going to do is going to stop the projection of your enveloping for, uh, in this particular case, the chassis and the body outline that you see there in, in, um, in green and red. Um, I, I have not been able to do that on an articulated vehicle, though it would be really cool to show it off. Thank you. Uh, one more. Can you simulate a vertical in the parking lot scenario? I have not seen verticals in parking lots. Um, I, I have not seen where it takes advantage of the surface. There is a surface assignment. I have only been able to address verticals for the path. Um, I don't have anything that goes off-road, but if I did have anything that, that does have terrain, I've had vehicles go off-road, and I see how it's uh, driving over the terrain. So not vertical or terrain for parking lots, at least not as of yet that I know of. The other part would be just taking the geometry and then you can explode it to start going into uh, what I'm hoping or guessing is you want to do uh, the proposed uh, 3D layout and grading off of it. Uh, so the answer is not no, not that I know of. It would be all kind of exploding in manual. Okay. Uh, one more question. After the parking lot is laid out, the parking lot objects, can you select those objects to show how vehicle movements or do you need to insert each vehicle movement in each aisle separately? That I've been playing with. I've historically done it um, uh, manually uh, for vehicle movement through all, uh, all of them. I've been wanting to play with, and I have not been very successful in using, there's an option over here for uh, park a vehicle. I have not been successful for it. So I assume there's an option to help you with that but I have not been able to make it work. There is a button over here for park a vehicle, though. Um, I have done that by hand in uh, previous uh, occasions. So, so yes, and, uh, yes by hand, potentially yes automatically. I just have not been able to make it work out for me. Okay. Well, there are some great questions coming in. We're going to do a blog post to answer these questions, and we'll get back to you directly. Again, this is being recorded, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, guys. I look forward to chatting with you or answering the questions and look forward to speaking to you guys in future uh, blogs.